BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live once again from Studio B. Great to have you with us. As always, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Thursday, May the 4th. Oh! Be with you. Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a man who would clearly choose Han Solo first overall as a kicker in his Star Wars NFL draft, Jerem Jordan. No, that was David Kahn with the Y Factor a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah. Steve, who are you? Spencer? Hello. I've been, I've been gone a week. I didn't remember. Jerome your name. and Steve. Yeah, what's up? Good to be back. Uh, okay, Ryan Wilson, CBS. Did a top 10 Star Wars draft. This is incredible, okay? Here's he, Jabba the Hutt goes first as an offensive lineman to Jacksonville. <laughs> Detroit takes the Rancor as an edge rusher. Houston <laughs> takes Luke Skywalker as a quarterback. Okay. The Jets take the Mandalorian as a corner, a.k.a. Sauce Gardner. Oh, I love that. Uh Dallas takes Darth Vader, a quarterback. A quarterback? Darth Vader's a quarterback. I think he'd be more of a tight end, like a red zone tight end, Tony <laughs> Gonzalez type. Uh, Carolina takes Princess Leia as a safety. The Giants take Chewbacca as a left tackle. <laughs> Some think Chewbacca would be the first pick taken as a left tackle. Total left tackle type, right? Absolutely. Chewbacca, yeah. Just tall. Or or like a Corbin Kafusi edge. Imposing. Yeah. Okay. Obi-Wan Kenobi is a linebacker. Darth Maul is a corner. Sneaky underrated there to my Seahawks. And then uh, the Jets tack on Jar Jar Binks as a wide receiver. Jar Jar. Misa thinks this is stupid. He's but, got a twitchiness yeah. about him, Jerem. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, may the fourth be with you. Love uh, Star Wars. Obi-Wan Kenobi released a new trailer. Not the guy of the show. Which comes out May 27th, man. Cannot wait. We got Stranger Things this month. We got Maverick. We got Doctor Strange this weekend. We got Obi-Wan Kenobi. May is popping. It's going to be May. It's a good time for us to head into the quote-unquote quiet season of sports, right? I've been there for a minute when men's volleyball left. It's true. You're in the softball baseball game still. Only... Things are still ramping up because of all of this madness with name, image, likeness, the transfer portal, among other things, which takes us to today's show lineup. Is NIL, name, image, and likeness, ruining college football, college sports in general, or is it enhancing it and making it better? We'll discuss. Steve Young will discuss that with us when he joins the program in about 35 minutes from now, live from the Bay Area. Plus, Justin Anderson is back with BYU Football. The director of player personnel discusses his adventures in Virginia and other places and why BYU, again, is the perfect fit for him on Kalani Sitake's staff. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. John Rothstein of CBS Sports reports BYU Men's Hoops is going to play Creighton again on a neutral court. December 10th, Cougars played the Blue Jays in South Dakota last season, lost 83-71 in one of the most forgettable games of the year. Uh, these two have battled for a recruit uh, recently, so they'll battle again on the court. Should be a nice game. Yes, it should be. I like I see what you did. <laughs> Some football news for Aleva Hifo specifically. He receives a mini camp invite from the Minnesota Vikings. That news, courtesy of Ben Criddle, from Evan the agent, his agent. Hifo recorded a 4-4-1 40-yard dash at his pro day. He was really good at BYU. Undersized, but that speed is hard to argue with. And frankly, Jeremy, he looks fantastic in the alumni game, which probably pushed him over the top. We helped get him some extra film. <laughs> uh, absolutely. He's the guy that did it. Baseball beat Cal State Fullerton 10-5 yesterday thanks to 13 hits with homers from Austin Deming and Ryan Speedy. Cougars are 24-18 and 18 overall. Three WCC uh, series remaining, excuse me, uh, five, uh, starting with Pepperdine tomorrow afternoon on the BYU radio app. It might actually be three. I'll check that number. But season's coming to a wrap here the next couple of weeks. Cougars tied for seventh. Trying to climb in that top six mm. to make the turn. Okay. I'm so bummed that BYU softball didn't get an opportunity to play Utah this year. Both games Both canceled because Shoot. of inclement weather. Dang. Not going to be rescheduled. However, BYU does travel all of five miles to take on UVU this afternoon in a rematch of BYU's big win at home back on April 20th. Good luck to the ladies as they continue their pursuit of an NCAA tournament bid. Three baseball series left to uh, correct what I mentioned. Uh, Michael Rucker pitched two innings, giving up no runs for the Cubs, striking out one in a 3-1 loss to the White Sox. 
Paisley Harding waived by the Seattle Storm. Now, because she clears waivers, she can be picked up by another team. She was signed to the training camp roster and played in two preseason games. Scored a couple of points, a couple of rebounds, and an assist. Got to work with Sue Bird, which was really, is, really cool. Clearing waivers means no one picked her up. Uh, so maybe she goes to a different league. Maybe she does something else. Oh, no, sorry. I thought when you clear waivers, that allows other teams to pick you up. So that it's not. No one wanted to claim her. Gotcha. Okay, not the same as how the NFL works, where you have to clear waivers. Well, now, in theory, she could be then another the team free agent. Back. But, oh, okay, but gotcha, if the gotcha, team gotcha. wanted you, they would have claimed you. Fair Just enough. depends how they want to acquire you, I suppose. All right. Hey, you know what? Paisley's one of the all-time greats at BYU for yeah, a lot of hopefully reasons. Yeah, hopefully she gets another hopefully shot. Hopefully she gets another shot. Yeah, if not, she's going to be a successful player. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Random Chewbacca. Chewbacca bringing it in. What's Trending presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Jerem, I just mentioned it off the top of the show. Name, image, and likeness is certainly making a huge impact on college sports, specifically college football, which has been under the microscope with some big-time personalities, Dabo Sweeney, Kalani Satake, getting involved in that conversation yesterday. Is name, image, likeness ruining or enhancing college football, in your opinion? Well, it's hard to know exactly, right? Like, right now, it feels pretty chaotic, Spence, where there's not a lot of governance about this. Uh, I can recall, you know, different instances in even church history where, hey, this new doctrine was announced, and people ran to a river and were, you know, doing... you know. People were, it was chaotic. It's not how it is done now, right? Um, you, you figure out, hey, what, what, what do we do? Uh, what, how do we govern this? Who, who makes the rules? And then you get like state laws involved. It's very complicated, right? Obviously, when you turn 18 and you have a skill, you deserve to be paid for said skill. Is a scholarship enough? If not, then what, right? That's like, should players make comparable wage yes like i think most of us are on the at once you graduate from high school you go to college if you got a skill like if it's non-sports non-nca you're like the most amazing engineer ever you can just go be an engineer and make whatever that you're able to make right so th- this is it's interesting like obviously th- there needs to be some governance on this it is sort of the wild wild west yes. right now with this the rich get richer uh, Bureau is trying to hang in this area as best it can, as all schools are. The small schools probably are going to get forced out of having certain sports at some point. It's just, it's really hard. So, um, and then there, you know, there are questions about Kalani Sitake being quoted yesterday uh, by Reddit College Football and getting out there. Um, and and he, he said something to the effect of, you know, I'm not sure 18 or 19 year olds should have that much money, da, da, da. That was not explained fully in context. So we want to make sure that people understood how that was yeah. spoken, how he said it, so you can hear in his voice how it's said or not, whatever, make whatever determination you want. He said it on uh, Big 12 Today on Sirius XM with Chris Budin and Gabe Ickerd. Here's what it sounded like. If you ask me personally what my thoughts are on, 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 on football and college football, I think there has to be a, a level of amateurism to it. Uh, I don't know if money is the answer uh, to everything. You know, I don't know if, if, if a, a young 18, 19-year-old is supposed to have that much money in their, in their bank account, but maybe there's a way that they can put it in an investment fund for them in the future. But I don't know if, if a first date in a college student should be going to some big old steakhouse like Ruth's Chris. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's great. But what do you do for the second date? Go to the Bahamas or something? Like I don't know what to tell you. you know, the, <laughs> the expectations for a for a college student. So sometimes to just learn how to budget and learn to be on a budget, and to have a connection and 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 hang out with your buddies and 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 just have that connection that just doesn't rely on money. You know, I believe that uh, college football players shouldn't have any student debt, which is why I really like the the, the thought that Built came in and and relieved a lot of our wa- all of our walk-ons from having to pay tuition. And we're seeing things. And we're trying to trying to make NIL work for the team, for the for the the whole group. And and if we can do that, I think if someone makes a little bit more money than the others because of their name, image, and likeness, that's great. But but we we're a t- it's a team sport. We, we got to be focused on taking care of the least of our brethren. And and when we do that, we care about.
about them, I think that makes you a better team and makes you a better teammate. So uh, I, th- I like the camaraderie and the connection, the culture that we have on our program right now. And I think uh, it's important that, that we as coaches and, and administrators do what we can to make sure that we govern it as much as we can and that we give our players the experience and not just, just throw a bunch of money at them. Kalani Satake again on Big 12 today on Sirius XM with Chris Budden and Gabe Eckhart. Now, the thing is, so Kalani gets this post sent out, the quote board that goes viral of, I don't know if 18 and 19-year-olds should have that much money in their bank account. Now, the context there, listening to it further, is, oh, the coach just wants those kids to have some governance and some tutelage into how to manage their money and not just, here it is. Now go do whatever you want with it. Which the head coach can control this for his team. He can say, yep, we've got budgeting classes. We've got investing classes. Sure. I'm going to sit. Like, Kalani can control that for his squad, which, yeah. Is, yeah. which is great. Um, does Is he saying, you know, and I know he was on here recently, but is he saying the NCAA should mandate that? Like, I don't know exactly. Yeah, I, I don't think there's much besides the idea that he just wants them to have – uh, to be set up to succeed if they do right. are granted extra sure. money at such a young age. I, I do believe. How dare he want that for his team? But I do believe that if you are worth something, you should get that value, and it's not anyone else's job sure. to dictate when you get it, um, per se. So, I, I, you know, maybe Kalani and I feel a little different on that, but I agree that, y- yes, you should try and set them up to succeed, obviously. He, and, and this Case is, in point being, we've seen so many young athletes that j- make the jump to the pros don't have a backdrop of that and right and see that money go away in a hurry right. and here they're not in the pros they are uh at an institution that can support and help them and hopefully that's what can happen here. here's what concerns me about this whole name image and likeness thing uh yes i, I feel like because athletes are becoming more and more exposed to big money and these contracts early on they're going to feel more entitled sure. and that creates some more big personalities and you know, then you get guys like, well, uh, Ohio State, they gave me 300 grand to sign, but I didn't play as much as I was going to play. So now am I going to go somewhere else and have somebody else give me another $300,000 NIL deal? Like, well, is that what it's becoming? You mean more? Like the Miami basketball? Yes. Player? Like, let's Ooh. go somewhere else and get more money from, from name, image, and likeness. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. oh, man, they just gave you 300 grand, and now you're leaving after, like, not even a year? Like, that – that to me is like, whoa, okay, now it's just about the money. It's clearly not about anything else. It's, yes. it's not about competition. And I, I still want it to be about competition yeah, and, and, and playing. Yep. And I want that in college, like yeah. the team, you want, some yeah. of that. Yes, NIL is, uh, I wouldn't say it's anti-team per se, but it's very individualistic, obviously. Yeah, I, I, It's not team name image like this, it's individual. a little bit of a concern. The other thing is. And this is general college athletics. Like, I don't think BYU is in the mix for these people. Sure. We're talking about now if a player is paid a ton of money and they're like well i don't need to go to school then it's like uh what happens if that player gets injured then what because they're just like well i'm not gonna go to school i got my money i'm out like you set up a contract con- like a professional where it's like well this part of your nil is guaranteed and this is based on Sure, but like XYZ, what? Don't, I want academics. them. I want them to get degrees so that in case they do get hurt and something goes wrong with their athletic pursuit, they have something to fall back on. No doubt. I want and, that. And this level of athlete might not be the one that's there to go to school. Yeah, which brings the, the, up, yeah. the one we're talking about, like the type that is there to, like there are there are those who want both, but in in the future, like I, people want to go like the high profile athletes. Of course, they want to go pro. That is the end game. But uh, if they can make a, a good living in, in college in the future, like obviously this is changing the game. In five years, it's going to look very different. In 20 years, it's going to look very different. We're in the first couple of years. Because it's new, it's kind of like, yeah. oh, boy. Whoa, we're we're whoa. figuring out how whoa. to govern this. Yeah. Like, People are scared of new. We don't even know who governs it. <laughs> like, There's some real issues here, but um, right now it is, it is messing up college sports a little bit. I hope that we can get to where it's, nope, we've wrangled it at least somewhat. There's always going to be issues. There's always going to be cheating. There's always going to be scandals. Our question of the day is name image like this ruining or enhancing college football. I will say this, Jerem. I feel like some guys are more likely to stay and play in college rather than make an early jump to the pros just to get money. 
because they're worried about their families or whatever, they can kind of take care of their families. Yeah. And so maybe some, Not like the high-end ones. Maybe some, like, borderline guys that might get drafted stay a little bit longer, and I do like that aspect. Yeah, like a, like a second-round NBA draft pick type. I do like that idea of, like, oh, well, it might keep more guys in college. Right. And I make the sport better. I don't know. And I don't know that BYU is firmly entrenched in that spot quite yet where it's like, yep, I don't want to go pro because I can sit like is Dax Milne staying another year if he's here in this situation? I think he's still jumping type of deal. So it kind of I guess it depends who you're talking about. All right. Let's hear from you, BYU SN and voice of the nation. This is the voice of the nation. On BYU Sports Nation. Tyson Peterson on Twitter says, I think name image likeness has great power, and with great power comes great responsibility. Thank you. Some can use the NIL to ruin college football, while others can enhance it. The choice is theirs. At Chuck Rama. All right. Yeah, it's, listen, we're, mo- we're mostly talking about the most powerful entities in college football. We're not talking about the middlemen or the upper average, which is, you know, where BYU, we think, fits. Yeah is in the upper average spots of college football competitively. Um, obviously, academically, we think this is high standards and whatnot. It's how amateur do you want the amateurism to be? Question. Last week I was saying, I don't really care about class with the, the students per se. but See, and I do now more because I want them to get a degree if it doesn't work out. If it doesn't yeah, work out. It's up to them. Whatever. I just want them to score touchdowns and <laughs> spikes. Like, we have this shared experience. Like, okay, cool. Hashtag BYUS on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to join the conversation. We'll have some more quotes. Nicole Auerbach, Brady Papinga, uh, Dabo Sweeney. I mean, so many high personalities chiming in on all of this. Okay, coming up, did Aleva Hifo's alumni game performance get him an NFL camp mini event? And what is a director of player personnel specific to BYU football? Because that's the title Justin Anderson has now that he's back. He's back! But join us next on BYU Sports Nation. At that point. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Samri. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, gift card, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. Now this is entertainment. Kind people working hard. Those power tools really stress me out. Back in my day, we didn't have power tools. We had sticks, stones, and uh, polio. Great. Now I'm thinking about polio. I've had it three times. (coughs) Oh, no. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Are you just wanting to watch the interviews on the show or the most compelling segments? You can subscribe to our BYU Sports Nation YouTube account today for that. It's and a convenience can... package unlike any other. We should, we should mention the elephant in the room, which was brought up previously, mm-hmm. is that you still have the nails going. Yeah. Yeah. It, they look great. I'll be honest. Listen, it's gel. It's a gel base. It, it's it's not uh, going to come off anytime soon. You got Nike <laughs> on there. I think that's kind of cool. And the stretch Y. How 
epically awesome is the stretch wide that Taylor Williams painted on there. How awesome is that we can get in focus on your finger now? I know. That's pretty cool. We're too. spoiled with lots of nice equipment nice. in the studio. Emma, Emma, bring it over here. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, live in Studio B on a Wednesday. Not a Thursday, but a Wednesday, May the 4th. <laughs> I am Spencer no, no one's tuning in to find out what day it is here. <laughs> no one's like, what is it? I go to BYU Sports Nation for that information. Teamed up alongside Jerem Jordan, we now welcome in the new Director of Player Personnel for BYU Football, Justin Anderson. He's back! But he's, it's, kind of, it's kind of an old new. It's, it's yeah. new because you're back. Welcome back! Thanks, great to be back. What's it's up, man? surreal. Pretty awesome. wild. Yeah, it's crazy. Honestly. We're still here doing this. You guys are doing great. You look here. great. Oh, Let me tell you. You, you. Guys look amazing, right? you guys, the fingernails are That's awesome. So I mean, great. it really adds a touch. <laughs> oh, man. What a journey you've been on uh, over the past seven years since uh, we last talked to you on this program. Yeah. Went to Virginia. Walk us through that. Walk us through what you've been doing the last seven years. Yep. So when we left here, we went to Virginia with uh, Coach Mendenhall and the staff, and that was a uh, an amazing experience, uh, just learning and growing. And in my, you know, I'd only been a personnel director for four months when I got here. So four months and we left, my wife was going to kill me at that point. Uh, but the experience there growing and with that staff and kind of power five football and how that worked in the ACC. And then what we were able to accomplish there was really, really awesome. Um, and then from there, yeah, you know, Bronco stepped down and um, we all had a, you know, find a new path, and I was able to step on at ECU, East Carolina, and that was awesome. Coach Houston and the staff were just great to me there. So I learned a lot there, too. In the three months I was there, I learned a, tr uh, a whole lot about recruiting and the different ideas and personnels and what you kind of look for in, in athletes. And, you know, you look from P5 to group of five, it really teaches you what you're looking for. So it was a neat experience. So uh, when, you, when you get to Virginia, obviously there's a bunch of BYU guys. Right? You guys yeah. go to an Orange Bowl. Like – Never you guys happened. changed Virginia football, which is super cool. And then Bronco uh, announced he's stepping down. This was very sudden, I think, yeah. to the staff, right? Yeah. Then you go to ECU, now you're at BYU. So what have you gone through the past, I guess, what, five months of I'm at Virginia, now I'm at ECU, yeah. and now I'm back at BYU? Yeah, it's um, uh, it's well, it's hard to even explain, honestly. Like, it, Was your when, wife mad at you about this one, too? You know, <laughs> no. It's, it's one of those, <laughs> she's like... Wow, really? Um, she was excited. I think it's, for me, it was an opportunity you can't pass up. I mean, this is home for me. My family's here. I played here. I've had amazing experiences here. I paid, played with Coach Sataki. And, uh, man, it, it some, it's even hard for me to, like, talk about it. It happens so quick. But with the stepping down and moving on, that's, it's hard, right, on a family. That's the coaching profession, the world that you live in. Um, I'm lucky to have an amazing wife and great kids and, it's kind of like, well, all right, what do we do next? And, you know, really didn't have anything set up. It's not like when I look for East Carolina job, it's like, okay, what do I do? Start applying for jobs and reaching out, and you have people helping you, other staff members. And, you know, meeting Coach Houston, he gave me that opportunity. He was just, it was awesome, and I loved it there. And then this, I mean, it just happened so quick, honestly. It was like, and I'm back, I'm back here, and, and, man, it's awesome. Like I, like I said, it's so surreal to even be sitting here again. October 28th in Lavelle Edwards Stadium, East Carolina is going to come in. You'll be like, hey, guys, it's me. Remember, I'm Justin. Know, Remember my, my guys name? Guys, don't hate me. Now, Coach Houston was <laughs> phenomenal. I, like, when, I, when, I, when it all happened, he was so supportive. Mm. The staff has been great. They reached out to me. And, it, you know, it makes you f feel good. And uh, I'm really grateful for that, how they handled it. And Coach Houston, like I said, he was, he was incredible. It's an opportunity you can't pass up. That's what he told me. Because you're coming home and BYU's going into a Power Five and all that? Like yeah, I think there's just a whole lot to it. You know, like I said, my family's here. It's BYU where I played. I played with Coach Ataki, played with Gennaro. I know Coach Roderick. We went to Rick's together. Yeah. I was uh, going to say, Rick's receivers, right? Yes. That's pretty cool. He was like the guy that I looked up to. I just got there and he was leaving and he was like, the, as he's like, he's the man. You know, I want to be the next Aaron Roderick. So it's really, like I said, it was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. The new director of player personnel for BYU football, Justin Anderson, is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Of course, BYU football alumnus. Did you feel in your heart of hearts that you'd be back one day when you left in 2015? Honestly, no. Um, I felt like, you know, every time, you know, I was a GA here for like a year and a half, and then four months, I was like, okay, I'm not meant to be back here. Like, I'm supposed to be somewhere else. And, you know, I'm a I'm a man of faith, so I'm always like, wherever I'm supposed to be, I know the Lord will guide my path. And so I just felt like my path is supposed to be somewhere else. And I coached high school in Florida. I was at Nichols State as a, 
and I come back for a little bit, and then I'm at Virginia, and now in East Carolina, I'm like, okay, you know, it's meant to be that I'm supposed to be somewhere else, but, um, man, I'm glad I'm back. It's good to have you back, man. Okay, let's talk about uh, what the director of player personnel means now, because there were three jobs that feel like they're eight jobs. Yeah. So, you know, the, the college recruiting world has changed. I mean, Holy from when cow. I started here as the personnel, and then at Virginia and building a recruiting department there and now East Carolina and I'm back here. I mean, it's, it's different. And so personnel is really, you're looking at, I would say it's similar to general, general manager at the NFL level. Like mm. you're looking at, you're evaluating players. You're trying to make sure manage roster numbers and, and all those types of things. So it, there's a lot that goes into it. And I love it. It's to me, it's like a puzzle piece that you're trying to figure out and put the best pieces together. And the coaches are the ones that, you know, you're re really there to support them and help them find the guys that they want to recruit. And so, yeah, I, I love it. But that's really what it is. It's like a general manager of an NFL team, really. Best so, way to explain it. So there's a recruiting element to it combined with the current roster? Yep. So, you know. And managing return missionaries, I assume? Yeah. So you're evaluating current players. And now with the transfer portal, you got someone evaluating the transfer portal, which is crazy. So when a guy hits the portal, you, you know who they are. And more than likely, you've probably recruited them at some point. That's yeah. usually how it works, right? That's why they want to come to you. Like, that's why you always want to leave with good relationships with kids because you never know with this transfer portal yep. who's going to come back. So it's, it's recruiting and personnel and, like I said, looking at the roster and missionaries and BYU is unique in that regard, right? So now you're looking at expanded lengths of time where other colleges are looking at, you know, three, four years. Sure. So how is this different? Just to clarify, how is your position different than just the recruiting coordinator? Yeah, so I think, you know, recruiting coordinator is looking at recruiting the recruits. So there's the recruiting part, which is where you're mailers and calling people and getting them on campus and those types of things. And then there's the personnel, which is more like a scouting department, right? So you're scouting, you're evaluating, you're looking at tape, measurables, camp numbers. I mean, it really, all of those things go into putting a piece together, right? Sure. So it looks at, you're looking at the whole piece of an athlete now. So you're looking at what's his character like? Um, what are his numbers? Uh, is he a good student? How does he learn, right? You're learning all of these things like an NFL scout would when they go into a, a college. They're asking those questions like how quickly does he learn? What are his injuries? You're looking at all of those things and it helps you put a piece together and you say, hey, is this guy worth recruiting for us? Like, does he fit us? And every, every program is different, right? What we were looking at in Virginia was different than what we were looking for East Carolina. And it'll be different than what we're looking at BYU. And so you got to find what fits. And I think the teams that have figured out how to build a strong culture and know what they want, like they're very clear on, here's what we want, they're the ones that are most successful. You've brought, you've, as a GM type, you got to make some hard decisions then, I imagine, <laughs> where it's like, all right, here's our roster. We have these RMs, but this guy just came in the portal. We're full. Who are we going to take off scholarship? Are there uncomfortable uncom conversations sometimes like that where you're like, shoot, we got to talk to this guy and say, you're preferred walk on now? Yeah, you know, I, I haven't been here long enough to know that, but you know, at other places, yeah, I think it is one of those qu questions of transfer portal versus high school kid, right? So mm -hmm. do I take a high school kid or do I take this guy that's been developed a little bit already? He's a little more mature. Yeah. And, you know, they, it's harder to transfer now. Right. So there's that part. You take a high school kid, he can transfer a college kid. Now it's a little harder. He's transferred once he's with you. So I think right. there's that whole piece that you're starting to look at. And so I think there are there are hard conversations. Right. And it's it's not easy, um, but you always have to do its best for you and your program. Just like in my life, I have to do its best for me and my family. And, you know, making this choice to come back here was best for me and my family at this time and a hard decision. And personnel is no different, right? You have yeah. to have hard conversations. But if you know what you want and you handle it the right way, then those conversations are easy. Director of Player Personnel for BYU Football, Justin Anderson, is joining us. Now, based on what you experienced with the Power 5 program at Virginia and what Kalani Satake is clearly trying to build at BYU in terms of expanding the staff and getting to that Power 5 level before BYU makes the jump to the Big 12, how close is BYU to where they need to be in terms of a staff size, in your opinion? Because you've lived it. So yeah. how, how close is BYU right now to getting to where they need to be so that you can manage all of this and really continue that culture? Yeah, so I'm still learning everybody's names right now and kind of where everyone's at. But I would say I think it's headed in the right direction. And that's exciting. And, you know, for me, when I was talking to – it's hard to call him Kalani. I want to call him Coach Taki, but Kalani, um, you know, that was the vision he painted for me, and that got me excited of, of what they're looking to build, and I want to be a part of that. 
I like building. You know, when we were at Virginia, they had really no recruiting department. We build a recruiting department. They had no creative department. We build a creative department. And so it was one of those things that we saw what we needed, and you see what other programs are doing. You say, okay, what can we add that fits us? Because we're not going to be like everybody else. And so what, what do we have here? And I think that's the exciting part is it's growing and building, and I can't wait to be a part of it. And there's some element of uh, Virginia being unique within the ACC academically. Obviously, there are other good, good yeah. institutions, but yeah. Virginia was like, okay, they're great at basketball. They stink at football. You guys, you guys built a program there, which is pretty cool. Well, welcome back. Thanks. It's good to have you. Man, it's, like you said, it's awesome. I'm, I can't <laughs> wait to be back and just get going. Yeah, let's go. Okay, during the break, do you mind signing our flag? Yeah, we, 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 right? need, we yeah. need a Rick's College we wide receiver college. signature <laughs> up there. Exactly. Come on, we've got to keep right. that going. All right, sounds good. Okay, coming up, a non-conference men's hoops idea that might be cool this year, but not next year. And if you had an extra, let's say, 17 to $20 million because a certain team was leaving a conference and had to pay an exit fee to you, what would you do with that money? With, this... B- with BYU? Yep. I have some ideas. This is BYU Sports Nation. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment every opportunity and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary, and there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. Turn TV time into together time with the BYU TV app. Watch all your favorite shows when, where, and how you want. This isn't like a practical joke, is it? No, sir. Immerse yourself in stories with all the feels. Go on uninterrupted journeys of discovery and see families coming together while watching with your own. See new and original content all for free on the BYU TV app. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. He is Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton, and this is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get great content throughout your Wednesday, follow us on social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok, or all of them. Let's whip it! Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. Matt Norlander of CBS Sports Sports has an idea to take a two-game break in February to play two non-conference games to help boost resumes. Do you like this idea? I love it. We heard the term bracket buster for so many years on ESPN, like, oh, this is a bracket buster game. This just, like, cements that idea. Yeah. Like, you give teams an opportunity to play some big-time non-conference games in February and, like, oh, man, the committee's watching. You can boost your resume or you lose out on a massive opportunity. I love this idea. I love it this year as a member of the WCC. Don't need it in the Big 12. You'll have uh, 12. Why? Because every game is going to be a massive opportunity. Almost every game, right? So I'm cool this year, but I don't think uh, uh, being in the Big 12, BYU needs that. Yeah, and maybe the Big 12's like, no, we don't want to do that. That's for the other conferences. It might not, yeah. We'll see. It might not be needed. I, like a mid-major, yeah. The high major. Love it for mid-majors. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, like St. Mary's versus Creighton randomly in yes. February. Love it. Yeah. All right. Did Aleve Hippo's performance at the alumni game, Jerem, somehow help him get an invite to the Minnesota Vikings minicamp? Probably not. 
what we'd like to think of. <laughs> no, he was awesome, man. He was so good in this. Obviously, this isn't like legit film. Come on. But uh, no, he's super athletic, dude. And uh, he's still got it. So I'm glad he's at least getting a shot. Mini came invite real hard to make a team off that. But Leva, uh, he's, he's got good skills, man. Maybe someone will give him a shot. Charlie Peterson knew who to throw the ball to in the alumni game. Yes, he did. Find a Leva Hefo. A Levitate. Uh, he's, he's just got good tape, and he's really fast. That's why he got the mini camp in. His him. best tape is not in, uh, you know, a, a saggy jersey <laughs> in April. Uh, what should BYU do with these 17 to 20 million they aren't spending to buy out of a conference to get into oh, the big man? Moment? So many options. Because BYU just loves to throw the cash around. I want to build another indoor practice facility. Honestly, okay. so that BYU football can just have their own designated area. And the sports like baseball. Wait, you don't like intramural soccer, soccer just throw, no. showing up right I, now? No. Sorry, we can't practice our for our football game today because a karate class has a session. Like, karate? Come on! You don't like no. the go golf team? Nothing against the karate class. but like Packing it into the fence? I want another indoor practice facility that the football team and base, like when there's inclement weather, women's soccer, baseball, like they can collaborate on utilizing that structure and not have to deal with classes interfering with that. That's what I would do with the extra money. I wish there was a space across the street that BYU owned that they could do this. Oh, how about that? Provo High School? The former Provo Fred High School? Drury, Bulldog defense. Bulldog defense. That program's fallen a long way since Coach Drury left. I like things since we left. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do with the 17 to 20 mil? You know what I wouldn't do is uh, do a volleyball-specific facility. I know some people talk about that. Smithfield House, where no. it's at, bro. Okay. I know it's old. It's got these old bones. Yeah, yeah. I love those old bones. What if you just, They've up, renovated you just within upgraded that. it? Upgrade what? The Smithfield House. They have. I know. Uh, all the, Several all times. the individual seats are, are good. They have okay. the old wooden benches. Kind of like that part. It's I'm just right talking on about top the whole facility. Offices in there, like all that stuff. They have with volleyball. But have they done it with the others, track and field, and the upstairs offices? And uh, I don't know that. Yeah. So maybe, maybe some money there, the only or maybe some more there. suites in Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Okay. If we're talking real talk, Lavelle Edwards Stadium uh, needs that that press box got to be redone completely. Okay. okay. Um, and I know they've worked on some things here and there, which is awesome. But they got to add more. Another side, maybe. And uh, indoor, uh, sorry, the uh, locker room. Okay. Locker room at, locker room at LES. There are a lot of things that we could do with that 20 mil. <laughs> Tom's like, what you just asked was 200 mil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Try 10 times that. Yeah. But thanks, guys. Today is May the 4th, as you heard off the top of the show. And to honor Star Wars properly, what is your favorite Star Wars property, Jerem? Movie or TV? Empire Strikes Back is the OG. I love Rogue One. Yes. Also, The Mandalorian. So good, dude. So good. The Mandalorian is very engaging. That's by far the best breakaway series, I think. Yeah. Of everything that has come out. It's not close. Well, yeah. Okay. I'm consuming Clone Wars right now, by the way. Oh, Clone Wars is cool. I haven't watched it all the way through. I'm still going. Clone Wars is cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Mandal I'm with you on Mandalorian, the breakaway series. As far as a movie goes, I'm leaning more and more towards Rogue One. I love how much it ties Good. it ties the moves. Like it's such a great in-between movie of oh, episode three and four. It stitches. It's incredible. It stitches right up. Yes, every it. time I watch Rogue One, I'm like, I immediately want to watch episode four. Yes. Rogue One is the most well done film. Yeah, it just gives like, so much meaning. Empire, Empire is the goat, I understand. Yes. But Rogue One gives so much meaning so good. to the entire first set of the trilogy, right? Oh, so good. So Thank good. you, George Lewis. Coming up. Who gets today's Rise and Show? And uh, Steve Young is going to join us. Heard oh, him? yeah. He's going he's gonna to weigh in on the name, image, and likeness madness within okay. college football right now. All right. How can BYU compete in the Wild West, the ungoverned? This is BYU Sports Nation. Quick crack. Wash all you want. Don't drive dirty.
BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. City needs me. I bet if I moved in with you, you'd become president. I have parents. This is just temporary. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Baseball faces Pepperdine this weekend on the road. Listen to the series opener tomorrow, 6 Eastern on the BYU radio app. Cougars tied for seventh with the Waves, trying to get the top six to qualify for the West Coast Conference Tournament. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B. To my left sits the Star Wars fan, Jerem Jordan. I'm also a Star Wars fan, just not on his level. My name is Spencer Linton. And it is now our pleasure to bring in Pro Football Hall of Famer, NFL MVP, Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl stop, MVP. Stop, stop. And he was okay at BYU, too. And he's an author. Let's throw that in, too. Steve New. Young is with us, joining us over Zoom. Steve, great to have you back on the show. How are things? I love I love my mom's version of the introduction. That's very good. <laughs> you know, it's like extensive. It like covers all the big points. And may the fourth be with all everybody. You know, I I, had, I came to it late. My kids <laughs> love Star Wars. Love. I mean, like, watch it, you know, over and over and over. And I had to, I had to be honest with them. I said, like, "Cause like, yeah, you are. Did you go to? Did you line up around the theater? Like, you, and I'm like, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> do that. I, maybe for Indiana Jones, but not for Star Wars. But I'm a, I'm a latecomer to it. But I do. I have. Uh, cre uh, Develop the appreciation for all things Star Wars. So I'm in. Wait, so f your senior year, fall of 83, you aren't watching Return of the Jedi in theaters? This isn't taking over Provo? I know, it's crazy. It's insanity. <laughs> How could I miss? I was probably watching <laughs> Rocky 3, you know? Like, <laughs> I, 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 my, my, my sense of art was a little bit diminished in the old days. I've grown. I've matured. Steve Young with us on BYU Sports Nation in his matured fashion. And speaking of which, <laughs> Steve, okay, so with the Star Wars conversation out of the way, we'll get to the name image like this, Mattis, in just a moment. But I know there are a lot of BYU fans and BYU football coaches that are clamoring for Steve Young to show up at next year's alumni game. Is that a pipe dream or would that happen? Well, the sad thing is I didn't know anything about it. I read about oh. it afterwards, and I thought to myself, I was so offended. <laughs> right? It's like, are you telling me that you think that I can't play? Like, you, like, who makes the invitations and who do I need to go after and who do I need to go see right now and strangle, you know, for, for the lack of respect? Uh, and so I'm not over it right now. So I'm not sure what the next, I might have to boycott now because they, they, they disrespected me. I'm not sure where to go with this. But I can guarantee you, I don't, who played and what did it look like? It just looked like, you know, ridiculous. I, I, I'm playing next year. I mean, if, I don't care if they try to ban, even if they try to boycott me again. I mean, I'm playing. You're so doing I'll it. be there. I'll okay. be like, that. I'll come in with the shorts and the high socks. I'm ready to go. <laughs> and a so. mesh jersey, just slinging it. <laughs> <The> mesh. <laughs> but, but yeah, you mesh. have to play your OG. Uh, mesh. You have to play your OG position, safety. You may have to play both sides. Oh, well, yeah. Three three weeks of safety with Tom Homo in the back house of the <laughs> Smith Field House. That was, the, that was the low point in my athletic career right there. <laughs> Tom Tom was like, you don't seem like you're really enjoying this. I'm like, Tom, this is not a no one play safety. <laughs> Tom, this is not how the LA Express are going to pick me up, okay? This is not yeah, how it's going right. to go. This is not a yeah. – I have a better chance at, the, at law school than I do <laughs> playing for the plane safety. All right, Steve, now we transition to the wild, wild west of college football with name, image, and likeness. It's modern-day free agency, it feels like, within college sports. 
What do you think of currently an ungoverned situation and how it's impacting college sports? Is it enhancing it or is it ruining it? Uh, well, it depends on where you're standing from. If you're a young, you know, high school athlete, and now all of a sudden you're putting hundreds of thousands of dollars in your pocket, maybe millions, uh, you know, that's, a, 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 oh, that's terrible. Don't, <laughs> I, we don't want that to happen. But the problem is, as you guys have pointed out immediately, is the Wild West is, think about the Wild West. It was without regulation. It was without plan. It was just, this thing got dropped on the, on the NCA and dropped on college athletics, and it's exploded, and there's no... There's no functioning group that can come in and give it, you know, uh, clarity. Uh, the NCAA, I, th I think, is incapable of doing it. I think if you sue the NCAA today, you're almost guaranteed a victory. So I do not believe the NCAA is, is, the, is the group that can come in and tame what is the Wild West, right, to give it governance and give it structure and give it a plan. What does it look like in the future? And if you could, you told me four or five years ago that the NCA would be essentially neutered from this kind of a conversation, we'd all be like, oh my gosh, where are we, where are we going to go? So, you know, with that in mind, okay, who else can come in over the top uh, and try to create something that would be useful? And that's Congress. And I just, I don't think they'll do it. My, that's my, you could, people can hope that Congress comes and acts and creates an environment where we can try to figure out what an student, a student athlete is. But I just, I don't believe that that's going to happen. So if I'm right, what you have is the people who are going to decide it are the people with all the marbles. And who has all the marbles today? That's the commissioner of the SEC. Yeah. And, and the television, right? And they'll, and what will they, what, how will they think about it? They'll think about it as there's an elite group of, schools that will collect and the television will say look i need these 50 schools and then those 50 schools are in and they'll figure out how to divvy it up and they'll figure out how to do it and then you know and they'll uh and that's football and basketball kind of maybe creates the same kind of environment and then you know then everyone else and everyone else is going to be just what you can fund you know and then you're Think about the NILs today and where, like, all of the money that used to pour into athletic departments to try to create a, a budget surplus or at least break even so they could have 40 sports. We used to come from all the alumni and all the donors. So, so, that, so you had a racquetball team and a, you know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm overdoing it there, but I mean, just saying, like, uh, women's um, uh, lacrosse or, you know, you know, we had a lot of sports out there, men's wrestling. There's a lot of sports that don't make any money. They cost BYU, they cost all schools money. And how do they fund it? They fund it from football. They fund it from donors. Now, all of a sudden, that money is now dried up and gone. It's other places. Yeah, interesting. It's, yep. the, it's, the, it's, the sign, it's the sign the next quarterback, right? It's all, look at the $40 million budget that Texas A&M has for football. It's wild. $40 million to pay guys to come play. They used to have be, used to be zero. Now it's 40, and all that money is, where's that money draining from? And that's, you know, that sound you hear, draining from all the other sports that aren't, you know, don't have the fun, don't have the funding, don't have the, 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 uh, the budget. So what happens if I'm right? That the, mall, the guy, the TV, TV and the SEC figure out who the friends are to take all the money. All the money in the college system is going to go to football and basketball and to those few teams. And all the other money is going to be drained from it. And then how do you, what do you have left? I, I, I have no idea. And you say, well, that can't happen. That's impossible. No one will let that happen. I, I just don't, I mean, I, I had a long conversation with a power five men's basketball head coach the other day. And he feels like um, college athletics is dead. Mm. When it comes to other sports than basketball and football, there will not be because, or there'll be, and the, and the, and the, and the college football environment will be like Alabama. You'll go play for Alabama. You get paid. You don't go to school. You'll just be a employee of Alabama. And that's how that'll, that'll go down. Yeah. And so the idea that, and then you figure like a Stanford 
or a BYU or, you know, those that, you know, those schools that are just going to have a lot of integrity around what the system should look like. They're going to try to figure out another way to do it. And they'll just have to go fund it themselves and try to create an environment where they can go compete with each other. And I'm not talking about football. Football's different. But all the other sports, they're going to have to figure out a new way forward and an unfunded new funding to go be able to play college sports. Okay, we've got three minutes left, Steve. Wanted to get your uh, take on Tyler Algier to the Falcons. What do you think oh, of that? Wait, fit? you have no uh, – you're going to say just let that go? Like, I just told you <laughs> – like, that's, that's madness. It is it, madness. It is okay. madness. And, and hopefully BYU will be included on the in crowd. That's a concern we've had is, okay, if there's separation, will BYU be included there? It'll be – you know we'll be on the bubble, right? We've always been on the bubble. So we'll just, you know, we got, but you look, one of the, 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 the head coach that I talked to last week said BYU on NILs really progressive, really figured it out. Yeah. Leading the way, yep. giving people. A, so in that way, the more we lead, the more we have an opportunity to make sure that we're part of whatever conversation needs to happen. So I give Tom and, and Kalani and everybody credit for what they've done with them. What in the wild West, to create some, you know, a leadership role in the, in the wild West. And certainly this NIL business is going to have an impact. It's already having an impact on the transfer portal, which is a whole other topic, Steve. Uh, maybe they're so intertwined that it's just kind of one big subject, but the transfer portal also greatly impacting the future of college sports. Do you like what's happening there? Do you feel like guys should it's, be able to go where they want to go more often? The problem is, is that we're trying to create an environment for students, you know, student athletes. To get through college, right? That's how it's supposed to be. Like, get a degree. We want, we want graduates. We want degrees. We want people educated. Like the whole point was, and I think that you can see that with the portal just adds another layer away from the, you know, kind of the student athlete to more to the professionalized free agency and kind of, you know, semi-pro league that college football will become is, is now. That's what I kept saying about the, this, this head coach. I'm like, you know, yeah, what do you think? Like, no, it's happening now. And so the idea that, you know, that we're going to hold on to this glamorous idea of ideal of student athlete is it's dead. That's I, I that's what he said. I tend to agree. And so the portal just makes it that much more mm -hmm. of, you know, it, it's the NFL and, and it's the NBA and just a different different guys, different ways to think about it. But that's what it is. And the idea that it's now uh, disconnected from you know, school, you know, scholar scholarship is is a fact. So I think you, soon it'll just become a complete disassociation from school. You won't you won't play for you know BYU going to school. We'll force it, you know, because that's we'll have the integrity to do it. But most schools will just say, look, just you're an employee of the school through the portal. We'll take our best we'll take our best fifty guys this year through the portal and, and otherwise who we'll, we'll we recruit, just like just like in the NFL. We, we draft some guys, we get some free agents, we put them all together, we throw them together with a, you know, with a budget, and off we go, and we try to go win a Super Bowl. And then they, we blow it all up, and we do it again next year. It's exactly what's happening in college football. So just look at the NFL. It won't be nearly as structured as the NFL, but it's the same thing. Steve, I wish we could talk for like an hour or longer, but we're being told that we've got 30 seconds left. So I do want to take this time to promote your new book, the law of love. Yeah. Okay. We all need some solace in this wild, wild west chaos sports world. Let's find some solace in, solace in your book. Yeah. Let's be very clear. I did not come on and trade for you to promote <laughs> this. I mean, this true. Came no. out of nowhere. No, no. <laughs> so I, I know it, it sounds crazy, but it's my way forward uh, in my kind of religious life. And I really, I, I, Find, I found it very, very engaging for me, and, I, and I'm hoping that other people find it equally engaging on the way forward. It's, it's my way forward, and, I, and I, it's very, very meaningful to me, and I appreciate you mentioning it. Hey, you got it. Uh, we're going to have you back on again soon because we need to discuss Zach Wilson's offseason and Tyler Algier to the Falcons. So oh, let's make that happen next we got time. Some, we got some things to have. And Tyler, Tyler's in a great spot to go play. If Mike Davis, I think he's going to – I think Tyler starts – Oh, week man. Three. Okay. Woo. okay. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Now that's what we call a tease. All right, Steve. Great to talk All to you. Right. We'll do it See again soon. Thank you so much. Hey guys. Take care. Steve Young on BYU Sports Nation, bringing some heat with wait, those opinions. Wait. You're right. We need an hour with him. Let's go. Whoa. Coming up, rise and shout out to the father of a nerd nation. It's college sports dead as we know it. Holy cow! NIL. It's impact. This is BYU Sports Nation. 
Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This midsize truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Just had a very intriguing conversation with Steve Young. If you missed any of that, download the podcast to hear the entirety of it. Our question of the day, and we discussed it with Steve, is name image likeness ruining or enhancing college football it's enhancing individual bank accounts if you're a really good athlete for but some athletes maybe taking all. away from some of the lesser sports that rely on usual funding from football and basketball unless you're at byu and you got you got uh smarty street steel yeah, with the women's BYU's unique that way and you got uh you know built bar with the football walk-on sure um byu's been out in front of this which is the good news you has been progressive on this, which has been awesome. Our elite voice of the day answering that question, NIL ruining or enhancing college football, is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Doug Wright answers from Facebook. But not the Doug Wright, right? Like KSL Radio? I don't know. Doug? Oh. Depends on who you are talking about. For the fans of college football, I love you, Doug. all it's done, this NIL, is make the rich richer. But for the athletes, it's absolutely enhanced their experience. Okay, someone weighed in to me uh, and said this. I think this is interesting. Who can you trust more than university athletes? Who has more structure and discipline than athletes? They've spent their lives being instructed how to take care of their businesses when they get to college. They manage their time, uh, lack of finances, uh, school, social lives, fan interactions pretty responsibly. The, the sort of uh, vote for the, yes, the college experience teaches you prior to getting into real life, right? So there's, there's a vote for that. Um, it's interesting to see where this goes. Get degrees. Take budgeting classes. Make all the money you can in college. Well, the, the athletic department can help with that, right? Yes. And they do. They do at BYU, um, we know. I think they can continue to do that, right? And even better of, okay, if you get more money, then what? Here's how you invest. Here's how you save. Here's how you do Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. George Lucas, thank you for Star Wars. Appreciate yes, it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Our thanks to today's guests, Justin Anderson and the always entertaining Steve Young. Chewy auxiliary power. Sorry to Dennis Pitta. Right for Jeremiah and Spencer, shout out to Kurt Gavea. NIL. If you miss any of the show, download and listen to Steve Young's interview and go Cougs.